Iran has slammed the proposed establishment of a panel to document war crimes cases in Syria. Iran's deputy representative to the UN, Ghulam Hossein Dahkani, dismissed the initiative as a destructive move that would undercut efforts to work out a political solution to the Syria crisis. He reiterated that the conflict in Syria has no military solution and that the Syrian people themselves should decide their political future. Syria's envoy to the UN, Bashar al-Ja'afari, also blasted the move, saying it would scuttle all chances of finding a political solution to the Syria conflict. The reactions come after the UN General Assembly voted on a resolution proposed by Liechtenstein and Qatar to set up a panel to gather evidence of war crimes in Syria. The measure was co-sponsored by several countries, including the U.S., U.K., and France, and the regional allies like Saudi Arabia and Turkey. Joining us via Skype from uh, Sydney is Paul Antonopoulos. He's a political commentator. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, sir. Now, first of all, uh, I'd like to get your opinion as far as this proposal for establishing a panel to document war crimes goes. Iran says it will derail efforts for peace. What do you say to that? We need to remember that this resolution is very politicized. We have to look at one of the states that are pushing for this, and that is Qatar, the, one of the primary fund uh, sponsors of the terrorist groups in Syria. So we need to question the motive of, of this and what will be uncovered. If we look recently, uh, a British uh, parliamentary investigation into Libya discovered that Gaddafi actually didn't carry out war crimes in Benghazi and across the country. So. You know, this is only recent and, and only this is five years after the Libyan intervention. So I see similar similarities um, with what's going on in Syria with this current resolution being pushed by Qatar and their allies, as you mentioned, in the UK, U USA, Saudi Arabia and, and Turkey. So you're saying basically such a panel, if established, would be focusing on the Syrian government and not really the foreign back militants that are operating on Syrian soil? We need to look at the example of Al Zinki, who beheaded a 12 or 13 year old Palestinian boy just a matter of months ago, and how little condemnation came from that. In fact, the USA even called them so much uh, as, as continu continually being moderate that he denounced them and they failed to um, uh, cancel their sponsorship for them. So we need to question this. And, and the primary question is that it would be mostly focused on the government rather than the militant groups. Right, so considering that this uh, resolution has been passed by the UN General Assembly, one has to question then whether international fora like the UN are still impartial enough to be used in situations like Syria. It basically makes them lose their own credibility, especially after decades. You know, we're not talking about the last few years, we're talking about decades of continued failures on interventionist policies. And this has again happened in Syria. It's nothing new. We've seen this in Libya. We've seen this in Iraq. And before I let you go, Mr. Antonopoulos, of course, uh, there have been questions regarding uh, the countries that have co-sponsored it. You mentioned Qatar, but it's also Saudi Arabia, for example, its role when it comes to a country like Yemen, where uh, civilians and civilian infrastructure, as well as hospitals, have been targeted day in and day out. For, for people that are following the conflict in Yemen, it just becomes increasingly frustrating that a country like Saudi Arabia, that are the head of the Human Rights Commission in the United Nations, can continue to uh, get away with their war crimes. We've seen that nearly up to 500,000 children in Yemen are starving because of these endless bombings against civilian infrastructure and, and, and civilians in Yemen. All right, let's leave it there for now. That's political commentator Paul Antonopoulos joining us via Skype from Sydney. Mr. Antonopoulos, thank you very much indeed for your comments here on Press TV.